Let's talk more Big 12. Let's talk Texas at Iowa State. Uh, this game probably should have been uglier than it was. <laughs> it ended up being a 10-point game. Texas doesn't know how to score in the red zone for whatever reason. They just rely on explosive plays. But if you were to tell me that Iowa State had nine rushing yards and uh, Rocco Beck turned the ball over this game, I would have been like, yeah, Texas took care of business. And they did. And they did. Uh, any comments from you on this game? It, the thing is, is like, the D line of Texas is real. Like, I think we all understood that, but there was an obvious mismatch there. Sweat and the boys up there did whatever they wanted and they wreaked havoc. And somehow Rocco Beck still balled out. He still yeah, balled out. I love Quinn that Ewers, kid. I love that kid. It, Quinn Ewers' numbers look good and like they put up 26 points, whatever, but something about that offense, like it should be a lot easier than it is, uh, in my opinion. It should be a lot easier. And I get it without John the Books, but CJ Baxter looked damn good as well. Finishing in the red zone, like you got to be able to do that. If you're going to want to compete, right? Or if you're going to want to not lose, slip up, which I believe it's Texas Tech next week, and then probably Oklahoma State, I guess, uh, if they went out. But if you want to compete in the control playoffs, like you're going to finish, finish drives. And gosh, I don't know. I don't know. They moved the ball so well, like, in between the 20s, and then they get down into Iowa State territory, and they come to you. And, and obviously, the credit goes to Iowa State and that coaching staff, whatever. But you're too talented if you're Texas. But at the same time, like, when they need it, they get it, too, right in the fourth quarter of these games. And you got it done. You got it done. Yeah, I mean, uh, I figured you, you took Texas to win, and you took Texas to cover the spread. Uh, I, I took Iowa State to uh, cover. Iowa State had a chance to cover. They absolutely did. Um, that field goal there with about six minutes left, put it over uh, for you. But it, but I will say that it was a deserved cover by Texas, to be honest, based on the way that these team, two teams played. So the question is, I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Like, is, is this good enough for – like like what, like what can Oklahoma State do? Right, assuming Oklahoma State wins out, like like can Oklahoma State beat this Texas team? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. Like this Texas team is super beatable. Now they're over nine and a half yeah. cash. So like this is a good season for Texas. Like just I think it would be half, it would have it. to be like a master class coaching job. Like it would be because I don't think they can. Which you know, we've Oklahoma seen State before. can run the ball. Like, Ollie Gordon is a freaking stud. We've said it over and over and over and over and over and over again. But no team has been able to run the ball in Texas. That's the thing. You're running like, So they would the have to go in that game. Of that they can't go into that game believing that they're going to be able to run the ball. Oklahoma State would have to go in that game thinking, all right, Alan Bowman, this is another game for you where you're going to throw for 300-plus yards and you're going to set up a run game. That's what's just going to have to happen. So I think it has to be an Alan Bowman – and coaching master class for that to happen. So, Which I wouldn't put out of the, the realm of possibilities. We've seen Mike Gunny do it time and time. Yeah, again. but if you think I'm not hedging, <laughs> right? The, you know, oh, the giant Oklahoma State future that I have pending uh, when Oklahoma State makes it to the championship game. If you think I'm not hedging, you're crazy. You're well, crazy. yeah, that's just that's just betting responsibly, all right? Which we do encourage you guys to do. But at the same time, like, this Texas team, like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, to me, they they have not been dominant in Big 12 play, and I, I wanted to see that. The only games they dominated again in really were Baylor, who's bad, and then Kansas, Kansas without against Jim a bad quarterback. Yep. And then BYU without Keaton Slovis. Like, yeah, like – and I get it, the Big 12 is better than it's been years prior. Sure, you're not obviously not a, a perfect team. I get that. But I would like to see a little bit more. I don't want to call it urgency. Actually, but it, just was like, the, it was It was also Sawyer Robertson for Baylor as well in that game. So their only three dominating wins were against all backup quarterbacks in the Big 12. Yeah. So you're right about that. And yeah, uh, and and it's that, that Bama team they beat a long time ago, much different Bama team. But I, I, if you played them again, I did, I think Bama looks way better than Texas does right now. I think Bama's favored by well, Bama was favored by a touchdown in that game. I think Bama's favored by more than a field goal in that game. 
Yeah. In Tuscaloosa. In Tuscaloosa. So we'll see, obviously. I I hope we'll see. But for Iowa State, like, don't they lost? Yeah, they lost the past two weeks to Kansas. Or in past no, that was two weeks ago. That's to Kansas and then Texas and Oklahoma. Like those are three really good Big Ten Big Twelve losses. You can't stay next week, which could be another tough game. But I, I think this season is still a success for my camp for Matt Campbell. Like you lost your quarterback to crazy circumstances. You found a guy as a redshirt freshman, Rocco Beck. We believe in. I know you believe him as well. Iowa State fans, like the expectation for this program was not crazy high, and they've they've done they've beaten the teams they should have beaten, except in the out of conference. Okay, Iowa was different or Ohio was different, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think there's there's progress here that's very evident. And the people that were like, oh, that Matt, Matt Campbell's done, he's washed up, whatever. Like, no, he's still a really good coach. He still I agree. is. 